Hi guys, welcome to Threads Podcast Life Unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, super excited to have Mike Hamp back for the second time. Yeah. This is our first is our first repeat guest. It is, I believe so. That's so cool. So Mike uh, did a a walk for. Okay, we we, we talked about this last yeah, time. That's right. Not, a walk for thought. Yeah, walk for a thought, but not mental health awareness. What did we? Right. What did it's, we? Yeah, what, what did we tag it as? Yeah, we don't need awareness that there's a mental health issue. We need hope. Yeah, we need so, help. We but, need to show these people that that there's uh, there's a way out of it. You know, I want to show mm-hmm. them. You know, but you worded it really yeah, well. Yeah, no, there was some tag that we created during yep. the podcast. Oh. I can't remember what it was. Yep. So they'll have to listen back because I remember yeah. it. <laughs> so. So yeah, you started from Hastings and yep. walked to St. Ignace. We found I found out on that podcast where St. Ignace was. So <laughs> yep, that I was remember. good. I do remember that. Um so how did it go? Let's let's just dive right in and, and let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. First, thanks for for letting me come back in. Of guys. course. Cool. Yeah. It's good to be back here. I really enjoy your guys' stuff. So um it it was awesome. It was life changing for mm. um m- many different reasons, you know. Um but I, I found out really quick, but within a few hours that it was going to be insane. So, yeah. 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 It was, I, I would love to, I mean, talk as much about that as sure. you want. It's, Absolutely. Uh, it's been weird though. I've come back and um, it, it's like, I went right back into the grind of normal life, mm. you know? And then I went, I, it was really hard because I went into a huge, kind of like a funk, really sure. big, deep, dark depression. Yeah. I would love to talk about that because I'm just now, three months later, pulling myself out of that. Oh, so, wow. Uh, mm-hmm. It got deep and dark, um, almost darker than I've ever been before. So um, it was weird. It was it was weird, but I learned a lot in that time. You know yeah. what I mean? So Let's touch on that Let's uh, in a little bit later because I do want to talk about that. Um so let's just logistically let's talk yeah, about that. Did please. you have any problems? Um, really, everything. There was a lot of planning that went into this. So um, I was amazed at how much those plans really did help. And, yeah. and really, but the the big thing is, is I I thought I was in the best shape of my life, which I was. Yeah. And I found out quick that it didn't matter. Really? You know, yeah. It was it was something else. And uh, I I've trained many miles up to that point. I was in the gym a lot, and we were really getting into shape. I, I've never felt that good. I feel better now already than I was even then. Interesting. I'm, I'm starting to learn what I have to work on. And oh, stuff. Yeah. So I'm starting to, I've changed my diet a lot. And, um, you know, the guys at the, the owner at, at TriFit, uh, Andrew, he is really, um, just awesome, has great workouts. So, um, we're going to get back into better shape. But even okay. then at some point my mind had to take over. Yeah. You know, I, I had For to realize sure. that, and I'd never had to depend on my mind like I did there. You know, I was, I had quit pretty much everything in my life up to anything when it would get hard, you know, it's easy to give up. And I've always had a habit of that. Yeah. I've always given up and uh, it, I didn't want that anymore, hmm. you know? So I remember <clears throat> like eight hours into the first day was the first sign of ho- a little bit of excitement for me. It sucked, like leaving my family and <laughs> yeah, walking. it was emotional. It was. It, and the first day was 33 miles. And wow. You walked 33 miles in the first day? day? Yeah. And I realized that I overpacked. <laughs> oh, I, boy. Uh, my body was not as, as uh, built up as I thought. My feet, yeah. my there's muscles in there that you don't know. In t- even the hundreds of training miles I was oh, sure. putting in. Yeah. And the uh, uh, the most I had done up to that training point in a day was uh, 24 miles. Oh, I was man. training some, wow. you know, big days. Which is a, but still a lot. It Seriously. was a lot, but I didn't feel, I I felt like I could do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I got done. I was like, oh, you know, that was really hard, but I did it. And then the next day I went and walked 22 miles back home. And I was like, okay, but how am I going to do that 13 days in a row? You yeah. know what I mean? That's how I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. It was a battle. But into that first day, I was like, oh, man, you know, my, my pack was way too heavy. I I was, oh, man, it was rough. Mm. It was rough. When and you trained, did you wear a pack? I did. I, mean, I And I, I wore a really heavy pack on purpose, I'm, and I'm glad I did. Yeah. I, I trained to, I trained heavier than I thought I was going to need to, and I trained harder. You know, I was yeah. I was putting in the work. Sure. And um, it, it still wasn't enough. And it was only two... I, I don't mean this in a you know look at me way, but it was 284 miles, which is a lot. Yeah. yeah. But 
it's not really anymore in here. Like, cause I, I want to do more and I've been, and there's people doing way more than that. And there's, you know, there's just, there's some badasses out there. Oh yeah. You know? So, <laughs> so I'm not trying to cut myself short on it, but no. to me now, like, you know, I well, want to do more now. Now I want to do more. <laughs> yeah. now I wanna, so I want to train more and yeah. I, I have to prepare my body more, you know? So I have the right people in place to help me do that, and I'm excited, man. I yeah. really am. So. so you've talked a little bit about what it was like leading up to the actual walk and then actually taking the first steps away from your loved ones, and you mentioned how hard day one was. But I'm curious to know, as you're reaching the midway point, what was your perspective like at that point? Yeah. Um, at some point, I when I realized that my mind is more capable than I ever imagined. Like some of the, like getting through that 33 mile day sitting in Grand Rapids that night. And uh, I was like, Oh, wow. <laughs> you, you know, I was it. like, I yeah. did it. I, I have a couple more real long days, but nothing 33 miles. Sure. I think my next one was 29 and then a 27. So I was like, it's only less from here. You yeah. Know? So it's I was probably smart I, to do yeah. your, the longest one, your first it, leg. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm glad. I don't know if I could have done that. It's a mental thing. Like, Oh, mm-hmm. I only have to do 27 today. Yeah. And, and it is too. Like I, I was finding myself, I only have to do 25 miles today. Yeah. I only have to do like towards the end. I only have to do 15 miles. I was like nothing. I flew. Yeah. Like it was amazing how our bodies are awesome, but our brains are even more awesome. Sure. You know, and you get those things working together and then, you come home and it's not, you know what I mean? And then that's where I think some of my funk went. We'll go talking about that later, but yeah, once it's fluid and the momentum's going and you're starting to see the progress, you know, like there was nothing that was going to stop that. Hmm. Like I was, I was making, there's no way I was quitting. There's no way. I don't care how bad it hurt. I don't care how heavy. I don't care if it rained. I don't, you know, I had a lot of really sucky things kind of going on. Like my tent sucked. It was like a body bag. Oh man! Oh. And I'm claustrophobic. I Ooh. found out. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, found out the I, hard way. I kind of knew that already because of airplanes scare me a lot, and sometimes that's the heights. I'm sure, but it's that tightness. Sure, yeah. you know. And then I've I've kind of had issues with that my whole life. But that tent was ridiculous. I don't even like looking at it now. Mm. You know, I just want to get I rid of that. Thrown thing. it so away. <laughs> I, I sent it home when I didn't need it anymore. I mailed it back home. Oh wow! Yeah, I was like, I don't want to carry this thing. I, I wow. so yeah. So it was. That's one change I'll be doing on the next walk. Is a different tent that's not okay. Not like making me feel like I'm dead. You know, that's yeah. a terrible feeling. Yeah, it is. I, I, I say I think everyone has it a little bit, and I do too. But. Man, it's terrible. Like when you, and I can see it on the plane because you can't get out. Yeah. Like you're stuck in this tube for how right. many hours? And no you're really what. high up in the air. Yes. You know it, what I that mean? doesn't it's, bother me, ooh. but not being able to get out okay. when I need to. Yeah, but, that's yeah. true. Um, and then, so yeah, but that tent, that it really was like a body bag with little tent poles that bubbled around my head. So you have to lay on your back for the most part. You mm. have to sit there. You feel like, any noise is going to come, like, get you. Something's going to get yeah, you. So, I mean, like, you know, I, I, you know, I had a pistol with me on the walk, so I... Oh, did you? Yeah. But I, luckily, a lot of my trips, I had I had hotel rooms. I had people offer me to put... So it wasn't always the tent. Right. And, um, I have an awesome girlfriend who met me one one day on the trip, too, so I didn't have to stay out in the forest. So that really yeah, helped. So okay. that was really cool. So how so, recent is that? Because I remember I was trying to think back to our first time we had you on. You didn't mention a girlfriend. No, no. Um, she... Um, it was probably right after after the walk. Okay. Uh, after our um after the podcast. After our podcast because I met her, she bought a shirt from me. That's ah. a walk without shirt, and then we mm. never stopped talking after that. Oh so, really? It was it's and I it's the craziest thing. And I, I wasn't looking for that. I I've I've you know I've been divorced twice. So yeah, I, right. It's tough. But um <clears throat> I think when you're not looking, I guess, and then come to find out there's a pretty badass chick that's <laughs> that's into me and she doesn't you know that she doesn't care about all that stuff. She sees something more, and and, yeah. and it's been awesome. So it's mm. it's great. And I, I've known her from a long time ago too. But okay. it was just kind of neat how it all came back. Is together. she from so, Hastings? That yeah, right down there. Yep, okay. she is. Yep, it's it's, cool. it's crazy how it all went together. So yeah, <laughs> so I'm excited. That's so, awesome. So when you finished up the walk, what was? I mean, what yeah. was your like initial? Yeah, you you. I mean, I'm sure. You're, there was people around you and, and stuff like that. But what was your initial feeling on that? So what happened actually is on the 13th day is when I got into Mackinac City. I didn't get to cross the bridge until uh, 
two days after. It was on, on that Labor, Labor Day. Yeah, the, so, the walk. So Yeah, so I, I got to Mackinac City and had a whole – I got into the city – and then the whole next day I had to relax. And then the final, the next day is when I walked the bridge. So it was Were you really, too quick? Or no, did you no, plan it that way? No, we planned an extra day just in case. Okay. So, and we, and we knew if, if everything went as planned, it would just be in the, the city. So it was cool because I got to explore the island and we went and looked and had a good time. So it was kind of okay. neat how that worked. But um, we had to have an extra day just in case something no, happened. No, that was a good call. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, we got there and I, right. <clears throat> couple things I, I i had a couple other things about earlier in the walk too about some other days that happened too yeah maybe we'll try to get back to that yeah no, no, sure. no problem but, um as i was finishing up i got a few miles from the bridge and i took a wrong turn oh oh no. and, and it's like it didn't happen much at all but this one for some reason had to happen right then and so i i kind of got to turn around a little bit but i i kind of realized that when i got to the highway and I was I couldn't walk the highway, so I had to turn back around. And I was exp- getting around the turn. I thought I was going to see the bridge, and I get there, and it wasn't. Yeah. I was like, Dang it! Oh, <laughs> so, no. so I tried to take a shortcut through some woods, and it got turned around even more. Oh my no. god! That's that's like the only time that happened the whole time. Of course, really, downtown figures. Grand Rapids, I got turned around a little bit. But, sure. Um, and then, did um, you have a cell phone with you? Yeah, okay. I, I used my cell phone because um, I I. <clears throat> I, I like to stay in touch with people. Oh, like, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, I'd, I, there's that. no way, yeah. But it was cool because it was able to stay kind of with the social media thing, too. I was able to kind of keep people posted. And so that, I mean, that came in handy. But the maps, I would, I had my route completely on an app on my phone. So I wouldn't have to I'd just push a button. But when you get into the city, some of that stuff looks way different. Like, yeah. it's really close and the streets are mm. so turned. It's just like, wow. Downtown Grand Rapids is an absolute zoo in it some is. places. It's not so as be. blocky as you think it would yeah. be. Right. And it's there's not- construction oh, yeah. down by the bridges and stuff. Like, I, yep. I was like, I, and I saw where I had to go, but I couldn't get across the river. Yeah. So that's when I realized I was way off track down there. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, I got to be over there. Oh, you know, no. The storm's coming. And oh, the, man. Should I, I swim the river? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Day two, should I? <laughs> that's Oh, I didn't think about that. That's Should've good. Called me for a kayak. Yeah, oh, I know. I saw you doing a lot of kayaking, but not. Yeah, man, that's too bad about your back, though. So, yeah, um, I'll get back to it. Yeah, for sure. Gives you something to shoot for. Yes. Um, but anyways, I got turned back around, and yep. the, the the road that I was finishing up on was seemed like it was like a hundred miles. I knew it was like only like three and a half miles till I would see the bridge. But that three and a half miles oh, until man. I saw the bridge was... The expectation, I'm sure. It's it killer. It was insane. And mm. as soon as I saw it, I cried like a baby. Okay. I, I bet. I bawled. I didn't expect that to happen. Mm. It, just, it just seems like all the hard work that I'd put into yeah. everything. Um, yeah. I was just seeing that bridge is, was one of the most amazing things I'd seen. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. Emotions just came. I couldn't control it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that was... That was awesome. And then finishing the bridge, walking it with my girlfriend, Bridget, again, she met me up there and we walked the bridge, just her and me. Um, We had other people that were around. Wait, Bridget. Yeah. Bridge. Bridget. Come on. That's hilarious. I mean. Hey, Bridget and I bridged it. You know, wow. I mean, come on. It sounds like it was meant to be. Yeah, right. Come on. No, that is cool. I I thought about that before too. That's cool. Um, Yeah, it was just, it was the neatest experience. I had people on the other side, Andrew from the gym and his family. um, Oh, wow. uh, They were there. And that was kind of neat. It didn't need to be huge. Um, It didn't need to be anything. I I already got everything times 10 out of it. You know what I mean? And what I thought was for so many other people, I realized it was just for me. Yeah. You know, it was. uh, When you get done, you reflect. You're like, yeah, this wasn't for anyone else. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yep. And a lot of people. I, I cannot believe believe the amount of support that came during those two weeks. Like it came in almost too much for mm, me. Too much. It, it, it rocked my overwhelming. world. It was way overwhelming. That's why I got home. I didn't go on social media for. I didn't. I couldn't. Like mm. I, I didn't expect any of that stuff, and I didn't want sure. that. That's not. That was. It brought attention to the the mission, and the, I brought a lot of awareness to to what I was trying to do. Yeah. But it was also just too much. Um, you are awesome. You mm. and I said, like, no, I, I can't. I yeah. don't want because, I mean, I personally don't feel awesome. I mean, I don't because there's guys doing way more awesome stuff than yeah. I'm doing. And I'm you know on my trip, I'm hearing about these guys. And I'm like, man, these guys, they're insane. You know, so I, it just makes me want to do more. Yeah. But at this point, like that 284 miles is nothing, hmm. and and it, it didn't. It doesn't do anything unless I keep the momentum going and and really having people um, be positively affected by it. So um, that's what I'm working towards. And I'm getting slowly back into the social media, slowly back into 
you know, the pushing of the next walk and I'm going to start kind of, but I have to do it a little differently with a little bit more help, I think too. So it's not so on me, all, all of it's on sure. me. You know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You mentioned some of the people that were at the starting line and at the finish line. Um, if I remember correctly, didn't a few people actually walk with you for some distances? Yeah. Yeah. There was, I mean, the the support, like the day before I left, my community, uh, Hastings, came yeah. out you know, like in a huge party. One of the, the sponsors, Secure Counseling, mm-hmm. they put on this amazing event. And oh, it was nice. like we did a 5K walk and it was just like blocks of people walking wow I, I was wishing that the news or someone would have came out for that you know right. what I mean? or just, just to see the support that this thing received because that that rocked my socks off in itself seeing what the community did you know and um and then the day i left just more people showed up just to send me off and yeah mm-hmm. along the way like the first two well you think about it you don't get very far walking in a couple of days <laughs> you know what i mean no. so it yeah. felt like I walked a long ways, but I ended up in Grand Rapids. Right? You know, I knew the whole area, and that was hard too. I knew exactly where I was going. I knew exactly what I had to go past. Mm-hmm. So thirty-three miles of that, it's just like, come on, you know. I know <laughs> I got to pass the bridge. I know yeah. I gotta... So, um, but that first couple of days was honking and people stopping and mm-hmm. pictures, and it was it was cool. But the the momentum was slow. Oh so sure, I'm, it's like I had to keep stopping and. Which is great. It's about the mission. It's about people seeing that. You know what I mean. I, I understood it. Yeah, it's but a catch twenty two. Really you wanna is. you wanna do that, but you also have a you got work to do. Right. Mm-hmm. You're you're right. And when you start moving and you start getting in the grind, you don't want to stop. <laughs> the hardest, probably, um, probably eight miles was. Opine Avenue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? I, I I did not take into consideration walking that. With all that traffic, yeah. stopping at every stoplight, every every driveway, yeah, that was um, that was a buzzkill for me because it just wrecked me. Like mm. having to stop and the weight so heavy and like yeah. get down off these big curbs. You know what I mean? It's just like that it's was a buzzkill to was, drive it. Yeah, <laughs> right, Seriously. right, right. I hate all time. Yeah, when I drove back home, I I purposely went that way. Yeah, uh, just to look at it. Just yeah. because I, it pissed me off so much wow. on the way. Like in my feet were messed up that day. So it's just that was one of the worst parts was was Alpine Avenue. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, because once you get away from that, it's beautiful. Oh yeah, you know. And uh, but yeah, I had a couple of days of people stopping. I had random people stopping me at the weirdest places, like <laughs> that I knew, like they they would make the trip or it was oh, during they, the holiday. you knew them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, yeah, right. No, I didn't have any weird. Well, things, that would like. be cool because then maybe somebody. <laughs> Saw your story. I had a lot of that. I had a lot of people who had, um, who had definitely, especially down here. Um, but then you get up north, there's another guy who was doing an awesome, way longer walk than me. It was like 800 miles around wow. um, Lake Michigan. And that's when I instantly, I was like, my story ain't shit. No, yeah. no ain't crap. Um, sorry. No, it's you fine. can say it. It's fine. I've, I've, and I, I really did. That's when I, that's when it clicked for me when, when he asked, um, when did you know that you could do this? It's when I started hearing this guy's story, and I you know, he was one city away from me at all times. So we were like he was trailing me a little bit. That's funny. But, and he completed his ver- his his um like it was forty some days. He he accomplished his after I you know I got really? home. And he kept going, you know, and uh, his story was insane. His name is Travis Snyder, and he's he's a Marine veteran doing some good stuff. So, okay. Um, wow. <clears throat> but yeah, I. Alpine Avenue was tough, and, and then Sparta. I uh, had a friend from high school stop me in Sparta. That was pretty cool. Okay, just and it was a lot of weird, weird interactions with um, just different people, like at the th- different times. It was just, it was always like it was on purpose. Like there was a reason why. Like the old guy was out watering his yard when I talked to him, or the homeless guy that was behind the building when I got lost. You know, there was always that kind of stuff happening, and people that I was running into that was just like. There's no way I would have talked to that person if I wouldn't have done this, you know. So yeah. it was it was awesome. It was mm. really good. I saw a bear. I had a bear run out in front of me. Oh out, boy! And then was that in the national forest, the Manistee National okay. Forest. Okay. So there's a couple mornings that were really cold. Excuse me. <clears throat> so um, we, uh, you know, I, I'm walking fast. I didn't have a lot of warm gear. Sure. So I'm I'm moving, and uh, this bear runs right right across the road, right in front of me. I'm scared because it's – you can see as far as forward as backwards. There's no houses. It's just woods. Oh, yeah. man. And I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know about bears. You know, I saw a bear. <laughs> I thought I was going to get eaten. Right. I instantly stopped. I didn't know what to do. 
Um, the Did you co- stop and Google what to do with the bear? I called a buddy. Oh, nice. I called a buddy. So I should have I should have Googled it. Like I said, though, I had a pistol. Yeah. So I grabbed that. I put it in my pocket. I didn't want to shoot a bear, but, but hey. I wanted to shoot a couple rounds off if the bear wanted to, you know, come after me yeah. or something. Yeah. So, but I, I was terrified. Like I was, I was that frozen was... in fear, and uh, there was cars passing me. He ran out in front, or he or she ran out in front of these cars, and they didn't even stop. You know what I mean? Like they didn't. Even, they saw me walking. Mm. I would have at least been like, "Hey guys, there's a bear." You right? know what I yeah. mean? They just kept going. Huh. So I, I'll never <laughs> forget that. Yeah, good thing you had a pistol. I yeah, mean, that yep. you wouldn't want to shoot it, but you'd do it if you had to. And that's what he, my my buddy said. He said. They're more scared of me than I am, and I don't. I didn't. I didn't believe that because I was terrified. I was like, right. "There's no way that bear is as scared as I am right now." That's how <laughs> I felt. But uh, I got through it, and then I stopped at the next road at a camp, and they 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 had bought that camp two years ago. Hmm. Never seen a bear yet. Oh wow! wow. And, and here I <laughs> here I am. He crosses the road right in front of me. Oh, so. <laughs> That was quite the experience. I no think that kidding. was one of the one of the neater ones that I've seen. Other than all the amazing sights that I've right? seen, you know, you can drive that and see some cool stuff. But until you walk it, it's well, not slow a, down. Know, slow down and try to take it all in, and yeah. especially getting up by the water. You oh, know, I was sure. really really amazed by how beautiful that was up there. So, hmm. <clears throat> um, so part of you know we talked about the media, and you wish the media was at the five k and stuff like that. Did you get any? Do you feel like you got enough media attention? I know that wasn't yeah. your goal, but right. I mean, it. Hey, it grows the, it grows the cause, right? So, um, so initially, Wood TV eight did an awesome story mm-hmm. on the I walk. Remember that? Yep, they did a great story. I just feel like um, that was too soon, almost. Yeah. you know what I mean. I feel wasn't like that back in March? Oh wow! Yeah, so oh, they're just really soon. You know, I was training hard. They had, you know, they they had a reason to believe me. They, you know what I mean. I was. But it's just some guy saying he's going to do something back then. Sure. You know what I mean? And um, so it was an amazing story and got a lot of the right attention because um, had a lot of cool things happen back in March that still happened during the walk. I met okay. up with, with a documentary crew that's doing an amazing documentary oh, wow. called Needles in the Hay. It's about the you know the heroin you know issue in America. And he's an, his name is Brett Meyer. Amazing dude. They took a bunch of time and put they're putting me in this documentary. And awesome. It's it's awesome. So that was a really big one because that's the that's the vision. That's the type of people I want to get hooked up yeah. with because that's where the stuff starts changing. You know, when you get up with these kind of you know yep. groups of people and who they know and it's perfect because that's when you know things start changing for sure. You know, you get a bunch of people with the same vision and the same ideas. And that's, I think that's when things can start to happen. So absolutely. Um, so I had a lot of, um, awesome connections made back then. Sure. But during the walk, <clears throat> like I said, um, Travis's, um, walk really took, like they, they were stopping me all the time. Hey, Travis, Travis, are you Travis? And I'm like, no, I'm not <laughs> Travis. Cause oh. he was, he was hometown in Manistee. Okay. So right. from, he walked from Manistee all the way across the bridge, all the way across through Wisconsin. So the whole walk people up there, his story was huge. So sure. okay. honking, if they all thought I was Travis, <laughs> you know, oh, up man. there, like same thing that happened to me down here, but they were, they were thinking I was somebody else. I thought so. Okay. Um, so that kind of like, it didn't discourage me. It just let me know that like my, my, sh- Mine was over now. You know what I mean? Now it's time to finish this, get keep going, mm-hmm. and then get on to the next one. You know, I mean, yeah. it didn't mean that like mine didn't mean anything. Yeah. It just meant that like <clears throat> it was time to just push, you know, push through it. It's not about that anymore. Um, right. 284 miles is not going to compare to 900 miles to any news stations. He, I mean, he went all over the country with his story. That's awesome. I'm so grateful he did. And that's why I know. I'm growing because it's a good chance to get jealous right there. Yeah. And I didn't, that, no way, because put a hundred people in a room, no one's going to do what I did. No, really. Exactly. You know? No. That's you not should be like proud a, of that. Yes. And, and that's not pride. It's not ego. Yeah. It's not yeah, yeah. cocky. That's exactly. just saying, I did something that not a lot of, not a lot of people can do. Mm-hmm. Right. Now it's time to do something else that they can't do. Yeah. And that's what I'm ready for. That's what I'm working towards. So. Yeah. Yeah, I bet it's hard for you to not talk down on your experience when you look at this guy that went around Lake Michigan. But I think at the same time, um, challenge you to see it for what it is. It's a pretty amazing accomplishment. Right. Um, you know, I don't think you need to just because somebody d- did more than you did doesn't make your trip any less. You're right. And everyone says valuable. that. Everyone tells me, and I know it. And it's not. I um. 
I, cause I know I could have done that at that moment. If I could have just kept going, I was in sure. a mindset where I wasn't stopping anyway, right. but then I set a goal and I accomplished it. Yeah. That kind of, that drive at that point is done. Cause I accomplished yeah. it. Oh, I accomplished that at that yeah. point. So now I start training for the next mm-hmm. one and then, you know, the, the, the finish line is there. You know, it's, if that makes sense, like yeah. I, <clears throat> it's good I, to finished, push yourself. I finished what I set out to do. Um, I'm still just two years sober from alcohol. Like, mm. You know, I've, I, my brain's nowhere near uh, uh, where it should be yet. Sure. You know what I mean? So, well, let's talk about that a little bit more. You said that after your walk, there was a, definitely a period of depression. And we all know that when you're depressed, one of your thought patterns is to go to those those old habits that once numbed the pain, whether it's the alcohol or the drugs or anything else. How was that for you? Yeah. Um, um, what was that experience like? I did experience a deep, dark depression. Like there's, there's no doubt about that. And it's, it's, um, it's a level that I hadn't even realized was even real. Like mm. I didn't even know that I could get that bad. Or kinda. expect it. Yeah. Or expect it. I just did something awesome. Like I was going to sleep at night, like really excited and happy and proud. But then I had no direction. I, my, my, my routine was done. I didn't have like, I I was three weeks away. I didn't work for three weeks. I was, (laughs) didn't know how I was going to pay my rent. Yeah. Like I didn't, (laughs) I I was in trouble. Like, so I come back and I had to go, I had to pick up a second job and my job. Um, I had to just do some things that took me from training three days or three times a day, you know, walking two days times gym, Mm -hmm. eating right. And just being motivated and goal to not having any of that stuff and to change to work, work, work. And like, it was just a hard routine to change, you know, to jump right into kind of chaos. It was. And wondering like, okay, you know, how am I going to pay this bill? How, you know, so just like old stuff, like nothing changes. It's just, I learned how to use this a little bit better, Mm -hmm. but even then I, I was out of routine and then you get out of routine. You get, you, I, I think discipline is the only way discipline and hard work is the only answer for in my life. Mm -hmm. Someone, someone who's trying to stay sober, not some, you know what I'm saying? So like, you have to have a routine and you have to push hard and you have to work hard every day yeah. or because you, if you get caught slacking, it's three months later and here you are pulling yourself out of right. a funk, like, holy crap, how yeah. did I get there? And that's where I was. Mm. But I know, um, <clears throat> de- I'm 100% confident that if I drink alcohol again, I die. Mm. Not like I just fall over and die. Sure. But I won't come back from that. I, 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 <clears throat> I don't want to say I don't have it in me, but two years is a long time and I don't think I have that in me anymore. Yeah. yeah. I don't. So that it's easy. I just don't drink. I don't You just want look to. at you don't want to do another two years. I can't. Like. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But then it's, you'll say in five years you'd be like, I don't want to do another five yeah, years. Right. You know? So just keep that progress going. But, Absolutely. But if I started drinking again and got into that, it's so bad for you at the the amount that I you know drink. And it's sure. not just a couple of beers. You know, I'm taking you know shots of liquor and not even to get drunk, just to maintain and mm. yeah. Um, I, I care too much about my body. I put too much work into it in the, the trying to stay healthy and trying yeah. to push nutrition on my family and not push it, but show them that this is important. The right way. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. So, you know, I got to do what I can to just stay away from that. And mm-hmm. alcohol isn't, I don't want to say it's an easy one because people are struggling for their lives on that. But somehow the flip, or the switch flipped in my brain where I just, I don't want it. You know, I don't, that's great. I don't want that. But even in those depressive moments. Yeah. That's even awesome. in that, you know, I, I don't even think about it. It's not like, man, I want a beer. I'm not, no, I got to fight this. It just doesn't pop into my brain anymore. Yeah, so that's great. That's how, I, in my brain, that's why I start to question the whole disease, not disease thing and thought sure. processes. And I'm a firm believer that uh, there's there's some other things out there, you know, other than being told that it's a disease and you got to, you know, no, I don't think so. I'm, I'm a, it's not that, you know, and I, I think that I'm not saying it's a, tr- I'm not, the people that say it's a choice too, it's it's not that too. It's it's so hard to quit that it's like a disease. Yeah, but it's well, and, and it, it might be a disease for someone else. What I what yeah. I like about you is you you say this is what it is for me. Yes, and yeah. that's what that. And yes, that's what I'm saying. And I'm talking in my life. Right, like, I don't have a disease. Mm-hmm. I no way. Like 
I I just have a really messed up way of thinking. Sure. And it was a became a habit. And in my life, addiction is a mental habit thing that turned physical when I got into the opiates because then it's a physical addiction. Yes. Because withdrawal from that stuff is ridiculous. Mm. You know, and alcohol too. I mean, if you drink enough alcohol, your body withdraws from that and you mm-hmm. don't know how to, you know. So, but I'm just saying in my life, addiction is 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 a matter of saying disciplined on what I don't want to do, my values. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I just I just choose to uh, replace those nasty bad habits with new ones. Yeah. So I think we're all addicted to stuff. And yeah, we food. just have to choose what we're addicted to. <laughs> I'm I struggle with food all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, everywhere. People, same exact thing. It's, yeah, it's everywhere. You know, I just want to replace my bad habits with good ones. You know, and that's just how my my brain works. Well, so far, you're doing a good job. So one of the things that we always talk about on on threads is we peer pressure people to go to therapy. Okay, and um, so I have to ask, yeah. uh, have you done any follow up counseling since you've been back? Uh, no, because I and I re listened to our our podcast because I was. And I was thinking about it again today. Like, I think I have some stigma. I, not stigma. I think I have some things built up here because of my years of being put on medications and mm. stuff and, and still never wanting to communicate. I've My whole life, I've never talked. I've never communicated my feelings. Um, Bridget, uh, we I've never had a relationship where I can communicate about anything ever. And we're lear- I'm learning how to do that with, with a... You know what I mean? And it's weird because I'm. <laughs> it makes you feel good. You know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah. and you can open up and you can talk about things and you don't have to hold stuff in. Yeah. So I, I would love to find somebody. Um, what about your main sponsor? Sorry, no, no, no. And and they are awesome. Like uh, Giovanni at Secure Counseling is an amazing dude. But I don't, um, and nothing against him. I think I would rather talk to somebody, though, that I don't know. Sure. Right. You know, conflict, and, conflict of interest. Yeah, yep. right. I because, hear you there. like, if I'm having a bad day and want to say, you know what I mean? I don't want this person to, like, I'm going to go have coffee with them the next oh, day or true. go have lunch and with talk them. Talk about your walk or yeah, whatever. Right. But I'm here I am battling with, the, you know, that's just yeah. nothing against secure counseling. Right. And that, that whole place, they're just yeah, filled no, with I totally amazing get people. It. And uh, it's just for me, <clears throat> I guess... It's all still pretty new, and I've done pretty good by myself. It's hard to get away from that. So it's, I think I need to find somebody or something. Well, you, you know don't I have mean? to. No, I, I mean and, I do. I, I I think it's an amazing well, thing. Well, sure. one of the things that I I find with you is you kind of don't give yourself credit, and that's something that you I would li- love to see you work through because <laughs> you keep saying, "Oh, it's no big deal." Blah blah blah. I'm not being prideful. Well, it's okay to say that. Like you can be proud of yourself, and you don't have to say, "Oh, yeah, whatever, whatever." You know right. what I mean? And, I get that. And I think when you talk to somebody, you just your self worth. I mean, I know you. I, I think you have self worth, but when I hear you talk about your walk, I feel like you don't give yourself enough right. credit. No, I a lot of other people have said that to me yeah. as well. You know, and I think through through other things in my life as well. I you know I do I do battle with in here. You know, yeah, self esteem yeah. yeah. and being good enough and. Not necessarily. Um, I don't. I don't want like people's attention or anything like that. I don't want that. Scared me more than anything having mm-hmm. all that attention. But sure, um, being able to ha- handle um, like when people say that to me, like you are the, like for me, like I. I don't not think that I am, but I battle in there with stuff so much that I don't know what I am really. Like I just I know I work hard. I yeah. know I'm gonna if I say I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna put in this work. I yep. know I'm a dad, so I'm gonna work hard at this. Mm-hmm. And this stuff kind of has to just kind of come together when it does. And- well, one of the things um, I'm, you talk about with your relationship, you're kind of opening up. That is the number one thing. Like if you want yes. a relationship to work, if you're oh, having man. a dark moment, like you got to let your significant other or someone that you love in your life to say this this crap is going on. I, I don't need advice. I'm just letting you know. The ass is hitting the fan right now, mm-hmm. and I'm struggling. Yeah. So, because right. otherwise, if you hide all that stuff, people are like, "What do you do? Like, what's wrong with Mike? What's yeah. you know?" Yeah, and then you go three months without making a peep. You know yeah. what I mean? And you really, I, I, I know I lost a lot of momentum on where I was kind of headed. But if I wouldn't have taken that break, I don't know where I was headed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I right. mean? So, not, I mean, not necessarily alcohol. I, I know not alcohol or drugs or that, but it was getting bad, man. Yeah, you know I what hear I mean? you. And, uh, and then after a while, even at this point where I know what I need to be doing, you still don't want to talk about it every single like if you wake up in that mood again, here we go again, guys. Here I'm in this mood again, or I'm in, like it's just like sometimes it's like at some point you're a burden. At some point you feel like you're you know, so finding the people that 
that you know that that's not true about. Mm-hmm. So like I, I have a solid group of people, but you have to go to them people and it's easy to retreat and not, um, you know, talk to people. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's easy to yeah. not. I mean, it's, it, it's also still good to do the work yourself. Yes. I mean, it, you just don't have to take the, the brunt of everything, of all yes. the things. I, 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 I hear you. Cause I operate similarly. I'm Jason will tell you, I'm a huge internalizer. I will work things through in my head and th- the twists and turns and mental gymnastics I go through sometimes. Jason's just like, dude, you're overthinking this. And so I see the value in what you're saying and having that ability to, you know, thoughtfully process through your experiences and kind of rely on your own self strength and fortitude. But I think there's also a balance there where as you're finding it's okay to, to lean on other people. Right. Yeah. Um, as though it's it's difficult though. I agree with you. So and all of that, yeah. And I, and if I um <clears throat> walking that walk, um, I've only scratched the surface on on my own brain and on my thoughts. Sure. But I've learned some tricks that are truly life saving for me. I've learned things that even though I got into a funk, the funk probably could have been even worse if I would have still been struggling with the things that I had learned oh, yeah. from the walk. You know. Yeah. And, and um, I, I heard a saying in some song: "The bigger the river." the bigger the drought. And to me, Hmm. that Mm. speaks like, if you want more, if if you're going to new levels, there's going to be more levels of crap that could possibly happen when it does happen. You know, and for me, I, um, I went to a new place in my brain to be able to use it. But now here comes some more issues. You know what I mean? Like more is coming because I'm, I'm growing. It's the little, the, the issues aren't going to be the same little issues. You're going to have some new ones or maybe not bigger, but new. So I'm, I'm being challenged by by new things because of the next kind of level I've went in, yeah. in my in my use of my my brain. I guess sure. if that makes sense, guys. No, I, it does. It does. So walk me through it a little bit more tangibly. So okay. obviously, you went on the walk. The walk ended. You drove back. Life resumed as normal. What things on a you know a concrete tangible level? What things changed because of your trip? Um. Yeah. I would say being able to talk myself um, through my levels of anxiety that I always deal with. Okay. I deal with a high level of anxiety. I just always have. Um, but being able to talk myself down before the walk, my night times were terrible. Yeah. I had horrible sleep and horrible, like, uh, I'd get to be about four or five in the afternoon. I'd get nervous for bedtime and I'd just start thinking, because I, I was just having such a hard time for some reason trying to fall asleep. I'd lay there. And I was so scared of just not being able to shut my brain off. Not mm. it just kept going, and, and then it, it snowballs. Yes, my just, wife has experienced the same thing. Okay, yeah, and it's and it gets to a point where you literally you can't get away from it. You try to go for a walk, it's there. You try, and, it, mm. and it's just to a level, and it's me doing it. There's no, know, nothing it, else. That's that the weird? thing about it's, anxiety. It's like this this laundry list of worries. And none of them are none of them exist outside of you as right. a person. You're right, and. uh realizing that like when all you can do is you're walking for 20 some miles and you're, you learn how to, to kind of um, shut things off like yeah. I, and you start to learn how to use it. So you start to feel those thoughts coming in. You either, you, you learn how to fight them or you quit kind of one yeah. of those things, you know, and I had to learn how to, you know, you feel them coming or you learn how to talk them, talk them away or, or learn how to like, almost shut them off like they're there and you just no it's just not today yeah, yeah exactly and it really happens like that it yeah. really can and you it turns into a habit and but these thoughts and these in, anxious like things they, they're connected to feelings and they're connected to all these things that pop up so you start to have these thoughts and then these feelings start to happen and it is an absolute mess you know and i and i can see so easily how people just can't handle this and, yeah and it's it's and it gets so intense like so when I got back from my my walk, I I just I had to I realized that um I had this is gonna <laughs> I'm gonna say it just so say it. I I picture in my brain when I was walking mm-hmm. everything that I was thinking all the time like I was like okay how many more minutes how many more you know what I mean I was always thinking at first like man this is gonna this is hurting these my feet this this yeah. so I started to picture all these things in my head on a table. And it was filled with sand and like there's this big hole in the middle of the table and it's like a waterfall, but it's just the sand falling into this hole. 
And I was watching all of these thoughts and all these things that I was doing going into this hole. And I don't know why that happened, but that's what it just started happening in my head. And and then I started that just made me be present right now because I wasn't thinking about then. I wasn't yeah. thinking about what I was just going. I was just seeing this like so I was my brain was literally shutting off. I wasn't having any thoughts about any of that stuff. I was mm. walking and I was just picturing all these things just keep and then before you know it, time has gone by and like it it was just weird. I had to figure out little tricks and whenever and then now I start doing that when I'm overthinking, I just shut my eyes and I can picture it like on this table and just falling down in this sand and just disappearing and it kind of balances me it brings it brings me back to a spot where like okay chill out you know that's so cool it was awesome what, I what, a, what a great dad, tool yeah i remember calling my dad and saying dad this is gonna sound weird but i gotta tell you something <laughs> i had a vision yeah it was and it was it was really that yeah and, I, and it I was bet. it was like a spot where i was like wow this is i really have a lot more say than i thought ever thought i did yeah i really have a lot more control than i thought i did and that's just tapping the. that's just like i said it before it's scratching the surface to mm. what really is is available in there sure you know? so um that yeah. is really cool that is yeah. i'm glad you shared that because that's oh what a that's basically now your tool to deal with yeah, anxiety absolutely. which people that have anxiety uh like my wife on occasion it's like I feel so bad because I can't help them. I say, it'll be fine, but yeah. that doesn't do anything. You're right. Like, yeah. logically, and she logically knows it'll be fine. Yeah. But to have that tool, man, that is like a game changer it for you. And, and, that, and then something called box breathing. I don't know if you guys know nope. box breathing. Pizza so, box breathing? Pizza, well, you know. <laughs> I think that's what my kids learned it as. Oh, okay. Oh. I, I never heard of it, but I and I've just recently heard it called box breathing, hmm. actually. But it was... um. It's just like you, and, and I could be describing it completely wrong, but it works for me. You tell me, it works because for I my don't kids. know. So when you're getting anxious, like if your wife's getting anxious, or when you're just getting feeling things going out of control, um, it's it's a seconds like in. So you take three second breath in, you hold it for three seconds, you blow it out for three seconds, you hold that for three seconds, mm-hmm. and you just keep doing that, and you try to add seconds on it, and before you know it, like time has got you. You're right back in the moment. You're right back. Like all those crazy thoughts are gone because you're focusing on breathing, you're focusing on counting, and it's your body's responding to the natural deep breaths, mm-hmm. and the, you're like balancing it all out. And yeah, I'm no doctor. I don't know why it works, but I know it does work, and it's it's, it's all amazing. that matters. Yeah, it's it's really really helpful. So. Yeah, my kids <laughs> learned it from their therapist as pizza breathing. Okay, and the thought was you're holding a pizza box, and as okay. you breathe in and out, you want it to somehow touch the box i don't remember how it all went but okay um i wish my kids used those tactics more because yeah. when they do they work that's it see that's I mean, where, go ahead no go ahead i was say that's where i struggle is i forget when i start getting angry or anxious i don't have enough time like i need a, a one second like I get it hiccup where yeah. i can be like oh i gotta do this but yeah that's where i struggle i can't yeah. get to that that pause right before the anger or the yeah. anxiousness. Yeah. I get it. I and get my it. daughter, bless her heart. I mean, she has been through trauma that n- no kid should ever have to go through. And she had a mental breakdown over Thanksgiving. I mean, it was crisis mode. We were, it was a very challenging time. Um, and I just think of that time and I have to wonder if she practiced some of those tools that she has, would this have spiraled out as it did? So now our work with her therapist is, you know, as Jason's talking about, you know, in those moments when you're starting to get heated, nip it in the bud right away, pull out your toolbox. What are the things that you can work on? And it sounds like you had a great opportunity to put those into use. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. And and, yeah, I'm sorry to hear about your situation, Ben, but it's, you're right, though. There's something to work on. You know, it and, is, and it's it's a you, like you said. She's all that trauma. She's wired a certain way because of it. Yep. It's hard. You got to rewire that. Yeah, and that's exactly re- what we're and, doing and as just, parents. Yep. And it's <laughs> super difficult. I'm sorry to hear that, Ben. That's tough. But you know, I wouldn't. I don't know that I would trade it because you might right now. Yeah. But in like two years, two years probably not because I I see the flip side of my daughter and I see her depth and I see all the positive things too and she's incredible. Like she knows that what she did was wrong and that she handled it very poorly. She gets that. Um 
And in fact, on it was on Sunday at the end of the church service, our pastor always gives an op- opportunity for people to just to go forward and have some time to pray by themselves. So Miracle kind of nudged Andy, and um, the two of them went to the front of the stage and just prayed. And next thing you know, there's a couple from our church that was really with us through this time, and they're over there. And it's just one of those moments where it's like, yeah, this really is hard, but I see... I see the innocence in her heart and I see the desire to, to not be like this anymore. And it was very moving. So awesome. that's so good. Yeah. Sorry. Got on a sidetrack there, but that's all right. Speaking of my kids wanted to know about your kids. Yeah. Um, Jonah and yeah. So I have Jonah and Ailey. Ailey. Yep, that's okay. my, so it's my son. So I've been married twice. Yep. Um, I have two older daughters too. Okay. 15 and 14. Uh, that's Michael is my oldest daughter and then Riley. Okay. Yep. So, um, and then Jonah and Ailey are my, my two youngest, but we we're always together. I mean, sure. we, I have them. I mean, we all get along is, is, you know, the parents and all that stuff. So, I mean, our family's still a family, you know, they're around all the time and divorce sucks and yeah. custody yeah. and all that stuff. Oh but yeah. If you don't have an ex-wife, don't get one. <laughs> I have you know, one. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not even you guys, just people like, cause it's, it's, it sets, it's hard. It sets it up for for a lot of chaos and, and it can very easily go wrong. And because people go out of how they feel all the time, it goes wrong all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And before you know it, kids are affected by it and I've seen it and I don't want that in mind. My yeah. family, I don't want my kids to be negatively impacted. I mean, you know, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh so, yeah. Um, yeah. So Jonah, he is a stud football player. I saw his video, yeah, the he, highlight reel. He broke his arm this year with a game, uh, one game into the season. Oh, man. So that made it really tough. But um, yeah, it's I just love watching the kids participate in sports. Yeah. My two oldest are both on, my, Michael's on JV and Riley's on uh, freshman basketball. Okay. So that's that's getting to a new level. Watching my kids no play kidding. high school sports. Wow, well, makes feel, you feel old. Yeah, that. it does. I I feel like I'm in high school. <laughs> Man, well, how was this experience for your kids? How did you explain it to them? Did they join with you at all? Yep. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So I mean, right from the get go, when I was planning this, they were. Uh, I mean, you know, it started when I had my fifth shoulder surgery, and they they saw me at my worst place. They saw me in like after that surgery, they saw me in a darkness and in a funk. And they saw me starting to walk through that, hmm. you know, and they would join me on those walks. And I remember some of those, uh, just not even mile long walks, but my kids were out there with me and they were, you know, that, so they've been me with this from day one and they've supported it through day one. And then the day that I left was the hardest <laughs> for, oh. for them, for me, it was, it was pretty difficult, you know, it was only 13 days, you know, we have soldiers going for a year at a time, all that, you know what I mean? So in the scheme of things, um, it was really tough, but they really realized what it was for. And their school, um, Jonah's school, was really supportive. They've sent me videos and pictures and called, you know, called me on the phone. Oh, that's and so cool. So, and, and same with my girls. Um, their their teachers all thought it was cool. So, everyone, yeah. you know, everyone was really involved and really thought it was a pretty neat project. So uh, the kids supported me. They met me the third day. Um, they met me on along the road one day. Mm, so that's awesome. Uh, that was really helpful. Um, but yeah, they supported the whole thing, and it was great to get back. But it was it was cool that they they know where I've been. They yeah. know my history. Yeah. They know you know going from almost dying of a drug overdose to setting goals and accomplishing them. That's huge for me. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, for our kids, we're supposed to teach them what what it's. You don't, they don't have to walk to the bridge, you know, Right. but they have to see what hard work does. They have yeah. to see what getting up at three in the morning and putting an effort, or you got to go do this and this and this, you got to go work twice. You got, you know what I mean? They sacrifice and hard work. They got to see what it was, what it was all about during that. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, that was the best part. Hmm. Have you, uh, this is a complete side note. Have you had to repair your relationship with your kids after, I mean, cause you're two years sober. So right. they were there for the the brunt of that right um, um luckily um i'm not saying that you don't have to answer that no I just no in my head. no no that's fine i, okay. I want to i'll talk about anything like this is how <laughs> things get better this is how yeah. people get helped you got to be honest you know that's right um but luckily um me being a dad even when i was young with my my two uh, my two oldest daughters, um, when I was a young dad, I was 20 years old. You know oh, I mean? man. So yeah. we got married, and it just, 
it's not we're kids having kids hey, and all me that. too i had my first at 20 so okay he's 23 yeah, this yeah. month wow <laughs> yeah it's, it's crazy uh, yeah so i know what kids having kids is it's it's tough right and for me i when i found out uh we i was having a girl for the first michael um she, something inside of me i i was scared but i, I just like i don't i'm not gonna mess this up mm -hmm. you know i i want to be a good dad i hmm. um i i want to be active in my kid's life i want to be involved and they <laughs> yes i was going through a lot of bad things but i i wasn't like that guy that beat his wife up or no anything. yeah just, i'm just saying like people need to know that because i did have alcohol drug problems but i wasn't like physically abusive right. or anything. but they if anything, I was just not as involved as much because I was drunk all the time. Yeah. Sure. Not, you know what I mean? So I was still there, but I wasn't, I wasn't like causing terrible memories okay. in their well, that's, lives. No, that's yeah. super good to, so to I was talk like a about. functioning kind of Alcoholic. guy. Yeah. yeah. It's like I could do my things. It doesn't mean that I wasn't mean to my wives. You right. Know? Like, not, like I just wasn't there. Like I wasn't, yeah. I didn't know what to do. I didn't, you know, I just, it just didn't work. But it wasn't, I wasn't causing like, long-term like crazy stuff like i have in my brain okay you know what i mean yeah like, and uh i purposely didn't want to do that yeah you know I, i'll never i'll talk about my past experiences with things that i've seen growing up and, yeah and stuff that i've experienced um there's, there's nothing wrong with that. i have nothing wrong with that you know but there's some things that i just like with my mom and my dad like i just respect them enough to not necessarily talk a lot about it right now sure. you yeah. know? but i have things in my past that i've experienced that wired me a certain oh, way oh yeah me too and, yeah, um, i think everybody does absolutely and i knew i wasn't gonna do that hmm. i wasn't gonna lay a hand on a woman yeah. i wasn't gonna be that guy but you know what verbally is just as bad yeah you know what i mean so i you know so that kind of stuff happened but my kids were never really seeing terrible things like oh, that's to, good to really so to re like have to kind of re rekindle anything with yeah. them um not really because that's kind of done the speak like my actions and what I've done kind of Absolutely. done the speaking and they they kind of they're like we don't care now like yeah. it's cool yeah dad's exactly. back and he's in yes. our lives and that's it yep I, awesome. I was I wasn't lacking I was lacking just because I wasn't fully there but yeah. I but now I'm even better oh, if that makes sense sure. so happy so, for you oh, like man, it's been awesome you're gonna you're gonna just do great things with with your kids and your it's family awesome. and your life so thank you Jason. one of the things i want to talk about is the sock brigade with yes, zane i yes. was gonna do it but oh, I, I, I didn't end up going okay how did that go was, was that oh, fun man it was it was awesome and i look forward to doing more and you guys have to because okay. <laughs> like you would think that we were handing out millions of dollars oh, really you, know, you say socks eric says socks people f were running man really was, like people's eyes lit up and people just they it's, I don't know if it was just because it was something new or if like they just really needed socks that bad. Like it was like, it was a set, like, I don't, th I don't think it was like a gimmick. I think these people were really excited. No, I think they're you know? probably, yeah. they're probably excited about getting something new yeah. for Fresh. them. Yeah. Right. That's not a hand me down. Yeah. That's not used. It's right. like, these are brand new. These are just for you. Yeah. And I, and I learned on my walk very quickly that uh, I had advice to change my socks as much as possible. Really? So I know what fresh socks are like mm. and what they mean to people. And like, if you haven't had some fresh socks in a while, I could see how they would be very grateful for that. But Were you able to give them all away that no, night? No. Oh, we have, how many, how we have a ton. Like I really? was given like 3,000 pair, 2,000 pair of these socks. No so, Yeah. So wow. we, we gave out tons and it, we got back and it was like, we didn't give out any mm. when you looked at the boxes you know like, did we even do anything right right but it was it was an amazing experience and the weather kind of stopped you know we don't have um, but we can go in the winter i guess yeah you know, why not people's feet are cold right. i also would like to um do like hand warmers and gloves and hats you know what sure. i mean just something simple that you know i like a couple weeks ago for some reason i woke up just in my brain like before i even woke up i was thinking about what it would be like to be waking up outside right now with mm. none because it was cold out and I was just, it hurt my heart. Yeah. Like, it was just more of a drive. Like that stuff happens a lot, but that one really got me. Like yeah. there's people doing this like on the regular, like every day, like this is their normal this and life, yeah. here I am complaining about something stupid. Yeah. Like, here I am getting all messed up about, something. you know what I mean? We have it made, you yeah. know, and why can't I, I just, I just want to help them. Yeah. Know? And it doesn't mean anything huge. It doesn't mean I, I just want them to feel like more than what they probably feel on a daily basis. Yeah. Because, and <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, we can talk about it and just, you know, 
all day until we're blue in the face. Right. But, you know, having Eric and all these people show up that want to go do something about it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Come on. You know, yeah. that's that's what I want. That's what that's what it's about right there. Yeah, so. let us know if I mean we can do it in the winter. I don't know. Are they are they winter socks per no, se? No, they're not they're not gonna keep people's feet more warm. But they're thin, you know, but they're great socks. They're awesome socks, but they're just they're not necessarily meant for warmth. But why can't we get warm socks? Like yeah. you know what I mean? This is yeah, right. if if I can walk to the bridge, I can do Anything. And maybe that's how I maybe, look maybe perspective. Maybe Bombas makes. I'm sure they would make. Warm yeah, socks. I, I'm sure I mean. they do. I looked into them because I was looking for good hiking socks too. And yeah, well, sure. Um, so I, I I didn't see any like wool or wool, like yeah. thick socks, but I'm sure. I mean, sure. They, they got to have something a little warmer than right. what you passed yeah, out. So. Yeah, and and it was weird because Eric and I did this, and I was in mid funk. <laughs> like I didn't. Were like, you? I was bad. Like I, we went. Bridget came along. Okay. Um, and. It was awesome, and I loved it. It's not that like I quit doing stuff, but inside, like, I was in a funk. <laughs> you oh, know man, what I mean? Yeah. So, I I just I want to do it again. I want to, you know what I mean? Okay. I want. I don't know. I just now that you're back, yeah, back, yeah. and ready to fight. You're like, yep. you want to do it again. I do, yeah. and, and keep doing it. Like just not just again. Like, that's, like it's got to be on the norm, you know. And not right. just that food. Like there's so much that can be done. There's I know. so much more that can be done. And it is frustrating. We drive doing Uber late at night, and we see a lot of homeless. And even on those cold nights, it's just like. You want to do something, but you, yeah, 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 it's so. Yep. But you doing the sock thing, and maybe it maybe it turns to something more. Who yeah, knows? right. Who knows what can happen? But yeah. I know me sitting around not doing anything isn't going to help, right? You know? And there's lots of things I want to do, and lots of people, and lots of. So I just I don't know. I mean, you can't like you said, you can't help everybody, mm. but and you got to have that balance too. You got to know that you have to know that, or you can get yourself into a oh, funk yeah. just like that. So, mm-hmm. but I know if, if I'm waking up and being disciplined to the plan that I've set out, like I, I have boards, like my calendar and like, I have, I have to write stuff down, but if I'm staying true to that stuff, I'm doing the best that I can. That's got to be good enough in here. Yes. And then that, that Absolutely. brings, a, that brings enough balance to know that the tomorrow's going to come and we can do it then. But if I'm thinking about tomorrow right now, then not nothing's happening right now. Oh yeah. I'm thinking about yesterday, nothing's happening right now. So there's a balance that has to happen right there. So Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah next time you do it, send me an email or Facebook message or whatever. Awesome. We'll cool. join yeah, you. I would love to. I've I've got to get back in touch with Eric because he said he wanted to do it again. He's a real busy guy. He now, is. It sounds that's like crazy. I got off of uh social media for a while, so I haven't been listening to podcasts or anything okay. really. I've just been trying to get back, you know. Yeah, but that's now good. I'm trying to catch up on everything, and he's <laughs> he's gone like completely. He's gotten so much stuff going on now. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So. Yeah, he. It's good for his brain though. He's ADD, and yeah, he, right, he right. loves he loves being busy. That's good. So we'll let him do that. And, right? and I think me too, because once I get not busy, it's unless it's a, a planned day off. Yeah, I get in a funk. Yeah. If I don't, I if I you. like on Sundays, I have hard days on Sundays. Sundays mm. suck for me. Mm. Every Sunday mm. sucks for me. I really? have a hard time. So. I'm starting to implement some open gym time. I'm going to start okay. going into our gym on, on Sundays a little bit and doing maybe some some more things. I don't I don't know, but in every morning I wake up on Sundays, I'm already kind of in a little bit of a funk. So you I should gotta, go for a walk. It, well, it's, <laughs> yeah, you get up. I, you're like, screw this. I'm walking I'm three walking. miles. I have a confession. <laughs> I just took my first walk uh, last week. Wow. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. My first on purpose walk. Okay. So. Um, I just didn't have it. No, I didn't want to. I, I was kind of pissed, man. I don't know why. I was just kind of pissed off about walking. <laughs> I, it, I felt I love it. it. I just didn't want to do it. But now I'm pumped. I'm ready to get my pack back on. I'm ready okay. to start. Yeah. I'm ready to start hoofing it. That's so. awesome. Um, one thing is, I think about your walk and just that idea in general. Um, when I think about people walking long distances, I think of people doing pilgrimages, you know, to the Holy Land, wherever that may be for them. Um, Bible stories about Israelites walking in the desert for 40 years. And then um, I watched a show on Hulu called The Path. Have you heard of that? I have not. Have you heard of The Path? No, I haven't. No. Well, I, you, we, we have different tastes. We all that sure stuff. do. Well, to summarize, it's basically a show about a religious group and their activity and whatnot. It's fiction. But one aspect of the show is they go on a walk. And the walk is supposed to be like the super transformational thing. So my question for you, having done one of these, why do you think walking is so transformative for people? Well, I don't 
I mean, you you mean long distance walking? Yeah, not just okay, you know just... going out for a little walk, but right. like whether it's walking to the Holy Land. I know a lot of Muslims will walk to their Holy Land, and Christians do the same. Um, what is it about walking that makes those things so transformational? I think it's just because you there's nothing else to do hmm. other than to think and get to, connected to something more than you. You sure. know what I mean? And you uh you get I mean I think patience is the most important thing you can have on this planet and yeah. you have to have that when you're walking and you 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 start to when you have patience and when you start to you you start I think things start to work right. Like your brain starts to kind of function properly and things kind of like, just like when you're eating right, your body's doing the right things because you're putting the right things in it. When you're starting to get this thing flowing properly mm -hmm. too, I think that's just like you're connected to something bigger than you, yeah, you know? And I, sure. I, I think, and I, and once you're out there, you, you're not dependent on anything else other yeah. than yourself. Like you, and you, you have to walk to this, you have right? to walk or you're not going to get to where you're going. So it's just, you're stuck out there and it's it's sink or swim. It's mm. either like you're gonna do this or or you quit. And sure. so I, I think it's just connecting as something deep and bigger than yourself, I think, is what, what that's all about. So mm. And you've I, experienced that firsthand. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. and um I I don't think you will unless you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't see any other thing that I can do that just did that for me sure you know and that's just one yeah you know that's just one 284 mile right. walk yeah i had a similar experience a few in high school it wasn't walking but it was cycling okay and my youth group that i was a part of we took bike trips every summer and it was very much that mentality of i got to keep on pedaling because there's no other way that i'm going to get to this place that we're headed or back <laughs> <laughs> right yeah exactly so you could stop and then nothing happens exactly and if and i look back on my teenage years and that those trips by far hands down were the most transformative periods of time during that time span and it's because of that same thing you have nothing else to do but just pedal ahead and keep going yeah. you really get to know yourself oh yeah you know so um you know and other people you know they use that to you know to get to know god you know mm -hmm. to get to speak out you know whatever it is it's something amazing and big bigger than than you would ever imagine until yeah. you try it you know yep i think everybody should do one thing whether it's a walk a cycling hiking trip whatever the case may be where they're forced to be in that position of the only thing I can do is keep going. You're right. So That's it. Yeah. It changes you. Yep. Yeah. We got it so easy. Like, can you imagine back in the day oh, when you man. had to hunt for your food? And That's it. We're so spoiled. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's why we're all thrown off because we're kind of supposed to still be having that sort of mindset and that right? sort of work yeah. ethic. And we're supposed to be out in nature. We're supposed to, So people get all crazy, chaotic, and depressed and yeah. all these things. But it's just because they're so far out of touch on what we're really supposed to be doing, you know, as far as that hunter hunter gallery yeah gatherer and uh you know we don't have to we can just go to the supermarket and buy whatever we want we don't we don't have to work for anything mm -hmm. and no wonder we're so thrown off and, and out of control yeah because we're not doing it right yeah. that's how kind of how i feel but i'm not saying you can specifically say this is right or wrong no. but i'm just saying like there's more right than what most people are doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. And not even to try to make them feel bad, but there's just so much more to it. And that's why, that's why it's so cool. And that's why the attention and that's why mm -hmm. the, that awareness that it brings up. It's not just to, it's not just to the mental health thing. It's to all of it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's, it's getting being human. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like let's get connected with something more than the chaos. Yes. Cause I, I mean, 80 years is good average life and, most people aren't going to experience it. Yeah. yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. No, I don't so like true. that. So if I can help somebody experience it a little bit more than the crap that I've dealt with in my life that I know so many people are dealing with and get them outside and get them involved in some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's a win. Awesome. Yeah, it really is. It really is. So as we kind of wrap up, one of the things <laughs> I wanted to ask, of course, uh, uh, are you going to be doing another walk? And um, what else is going on around this cause so yep. we'll start with the walk and yeah. then so if you are gonna do yeah it. so another walk is definitely in the works okay um i i honestly there's so much to planning one of these things yeah but 
um, right now I'm just working on staying in shape and getting in shape. The, the logistics are coming. Um, it's got something to do with Niagara Falls. I okay. know that's, that's the case. Lake Erie. I, uh, I'm from Port Huron, Michigan. So okay. maybe walking through Canada. I don't know yet. Still trying to figure it all out. Yeah, but that, man. that is definitely the, I can see the logo, <laughs> you know, you know what oh, I'm saying? So, right? so, yeah. That's I mean, great. it's just going to be like what we have there, but just, yeah. just going to have the path the other way. Okay. You know? Okay. So I'm thinking about maybe trying to go through Canada around. I don't know yet. Okay. We're, we're still working on all that. Sure. I, I just got to be in shape. Yeah. I got to be able, no I got to be able to physically do it. So that's what we're working on right now. And that stuff's going to come. So. Further distance? It's a lot further distance. Okay. Yeah. It's, I mean, like I said, I, I got tested, um, <clears throat> not tested. I, I seen guys doing way bigger than 284. So it's not about them. It's about me now. It's yeah. a challenge to myself. But that's... there's still a competitive nature around that. There oh, is. Like, sure. come on, let, right. We're all human. Like right. you want to do more. I mean, right. it's... and that's, that's, what's going to push me through these really hard training sessions yeah. and these long, like I got, it's not like I want to beat that guy, but I want, I want to know that I've really given it everything i've gotten now uh-huh. 284 miles i gave it everything i had and, it, yeah. and it, that tore me up you yeah. know so i know what i have to do now to to be prepared for this one but this is well more than 284 yeah so it's going to take longer uh, it's going to take more planning but that's my mind was set on Mackinac. my mind was set on the bridge and once it, that happened i got there it's awesome. so same thing here it's yeah and that's just how it works it's for me at least i as soon as I make that decision in my head that I'm going to do it, now I have to. Yeah, right? and I think you'll be so much better. Yeah, you're going to find you're going to have different things that come up, but you'll be so much better prepared. Yes, for this one. Yes, I know. I know. And then for the, if there's a next one, I'll oh, there'll be. It, be you a know next what I mean? I I'm think sure. so. I think I'm finding. Uh, I'm finding out like. Uh, you don't have to do it like everybody else is no. doing. No, you know, mm-hmm. so do it how you want to do you're it. You're absolutely yeah. right. Make yeah. your own path. Yep, yep. As long as uh, as long as I I can help as many people along the way as possible. If that's not happening, then none of this is worth it anyway. Right. You know. So, so what do you think? In a de- in a decade, he walks across the entire country. <laughs> Let's I do can it. See it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I was following a guy named Mike Posner. He's a musician, and he just he just walked across the country. Um, mm-hmm. He did it differently than what I, what I did my walk. Uh, you know, he, he did it without a pack, mm. but he did it. I mean, nonstop. Like, wow. so he's walking 20 plus miles a day, sleeps in, in, he'd have a driver to sleep in the Winnebago. He'd leave that. His story is awesome. What, why does his name sound familiar? What? <laughs> he, uh, he's, he's a big, pop, he's a big pop star. Um, uh, and then he, he sang a couple songs that you might've heard on the radio or something. Yeah. What, is um, he in a band or is yeah, he a... he's a singer. Yeah. He's a singer named Mike Posner. Yeah, but what band? Or his, his, his own, like he's oh. just his, uh, like a solo know, sounds artist. familiar. But he just that really, I've been following cause I didn't, when I planned this walk, to be honest, like I didn't really know other people were doing this. You know what I mean? So I wasn't really even thinking. And as soon as I started to plan mine, I, I catch on to him going across country. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're so like, instantly, oh, dang it. <laughs> but still, for me, like, I already knew how hard it was. So I yeah. just, you know, so I've been following him and a couple other guys. So, um, yeah, cross country is definitely in the being thrown around in there. Yeah. I'd like to get a couple more under my belt first. Yeah. So, yeah. So what, uh, lastly, the, the whole walk for a thought I mean, is there, is this a brand? Is yeah. this, uh, like, cause we talked, I think we talked about it last time about right. what do you want to do with that? Yep. Yep. So it's really, and, and that's still there to be honest. Like what, what do I really want to do for, for long term? And really I'm doing it. Um, people yeah. are reaching out. Like I'm, I meet up with people, they, they'll reach out and I'll meet up and just have coffee or walk with them. Like it kind of happening. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, I had a bigger the different thought of what it was going to be like, but now it's, it's not any, it's just got to be what it is. If and, that makes any sense. And like, I know you're working on not thinking to the future. I right, know that's right. Or the past. So it's kind of that, that balance of like, I want to grow this thing. Yep. What is it? But I also need to focus on what's right in front of me right now. That's it. I got to be the best version of me. And I'm, people are starting to come out now. People are starting to contact me and say, Hey, how can I help? How can I be a yeah. part of this? So I'm, I'm like forming a team. I'm forming a group of people and there's no time frame. There's right. really not. Like we don't have a huge like a uh, schedule. We don't we just we just want to help. We're making ourselves available to people who are struggling, who don't necessarily want to be around anymore, who sure. are struggling with drugs. Like 
I just want people to know that they can reach out to myself or many other people like me. Yeah. And uh, if I have to walk a long ways to get that message out there, I will, you know. So one of the things I've thought of, like, I I like to think about this stuff is like, what could you do better on the next one? Not, yeah. not better, right. but different. And I'm wondering, like, would you still want to be by yourself when you did this? Is this going to be a mental thing for you? Or is this just what you do now? Because if you could be with somebody, I mean, you could have somebody like filming the entire time. Like yep. if you could find some, I mean, there's people that would love to do that for you <laughs> right. and like be your, be your social media person. Yeah. Like just do all that so you can focus on what you're doing, but you still have somebody with you. Right. I, yeah. I, I thought that, I think that would be super cool. Cause then you have all this film yep. and you could put together a small movie or you're a right. 40 yeah. minute thing. That's it. And that's all big thoughts that I have. Exactly. Yeah. I, I had to get that first one out of the way. Oh, I had sure. to do that. I had to make sure that I could even do it. It's like that first day I was like, ah, I would it be know. terrible if you went like had all this film crew and everything and you just <laughs> four days in you're like, yeah, boys, I'm done. Guys, Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> just, just like take off in the morning. <laughs> Ghost them. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. No, I, and one, one other time along the walk, I had a, one of my, one of my good buddies from high school, from earlier high school, he met up and stayed a night and walk. He skateboarded the whole time. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. It was, it was insane. Longboarded uh, a bunch of miles with me. He'd walk, park, longboard back, walk, okay. park, longboard back, okay. walk. Okay, that was that's cool. That was one of the most uplifting times that I had because oh, it was during one of the tougher times. I was struggling and knowing that he was going to come and be a part of that. His name is Jake. Um, that was a lifesaver on that yeah. journey. So that that was one thing that I just wanted to mention because that was pretty awesome. Mm. So. Um, yeah, but like you said, um, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of, I mean, the, the, there's really no limits to no. What, what can happen other than myself. I am my limit. I am the limit. And, um, true. I just have to stay in check. You know, that's all there is to it. Cause like I said, I'm still fresh at all this stuff. Yeah. I'm fresh at living life without, you know, you know, being out of control on some sort of substance or. Well, I think this is how you thrive. Yeah. This is sure. how you're making the sobriety. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you could do it without it, but clearly this is what. Yeah. You were called to do. That's it's like awesome. the glue that holds it together. I agree 100%. So it's I great. Do. Awesome, guys. Anything closing thoughts before we wrap it up? Uh, I just, thanks to you guys. I really appreciate oh. what you guys are doing. You know, my dad loves you guys. I know there's, I, I have other friends that listen to your stuff. I yeah. have a buddy named Marty that I work out with. Uh, he's like, yeah, I'll listen. I, I'll yeah. listen to you tonight because I didn't know what it was going to be oh, like. Sure. So yeah. people listen. You know, I, I really, really just like being part of what you guys are doing. This And really we love cool, having so. you uh, just because your story is great. Yeah. Awesome. I love talking to you. I'm always, interested and i'm never bored cool yeah. i appreciate it jason ben. it's a super i mean we're all about life unfiltered and that's what you bring to the table that's each awesome. time we've had you here that's so, so cool. thanks well, for sharing your story yeah, i don't want to hide it you know i mean what's the point because there's too many people going through things that unless they hear me say something yeah. they might not even be like wow that guy, really yep. yeah well, maybe i that, don't have to be ashamed to say this, yeah and that's know? why we talk about a lot of our personal stuff because yeah. like i know there's people struggling with the things i'm struggling with yeah and I'm saying it. I'm letting you know, like, it's okay to say it. And that, yeah. that's a huge yeah, thing. Yeah. Life, life changes when that stuff starts happening. Yeah. It does. So that's, that's awesome, guys. Thank All you right. very much. Thank guys. you. Awesome. All right.